Hello everyone. Welcome to Ka Homeopathy Study Group Pro Bono Webinar. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. So nice to see many of you from different countries and different time zones. Before we start our webinar, we always thank Universe for giving us this great opportunity. And Dr. Sweta Singh, our Ka Chief Administrator, will start the session. Thank you so much, ma'am. And it is my privilege to introduce Ka Homeopathy Study Group to all of you. Uh, Ka Homeopathy Study Group Pro Bono was organized and founded by homeopath and humanitarian Kavita Kukunur, president and CEO of Kavita Holistic Approach, Ka. This study group is intended to be an offering from Kavita to the homeopaths around the globe, sharing goodwill, and solid clinical work within the classical model are foundational principles for the CA. CA missions and vision are very unique to inspire young homeopaths, mentor, provide excellency for educational purposes using holistic approaches via webinars, which are based on uh, principles of classical homeopathy and provide professional continuing educational homeopathic credits for practitioners. We provide merit certificates for spreading the light of homeopathy around the globe. Dr. Kavita is a member of Kavin Friendly Foundation, a non-profit organization that helps to serve poor people in greater needs in India. She is the recipient of Martha Ullman uh, Community Service Award by National Center for Homeopathy and Best Entrepreneur Award from Dr. N. Linga Raju, Principal of JSPS uh, Homeopathic Medical College, Hyderabad, India. We are extremely happy and proud that we celebrated 10 years of her book, Beyond the Limits, a challenge to prove oneself. And today, we are more happy as we successfully uh, completed one month of her second writer, her ebook, A Dose of Spirituality with Kavita. Dr. Kavita donated the proceedings of the book through Ka Homeopathy Study Group pla platform to various charitable uh, and homeopathic associations. To name a few are Kevin Friendly Foundation, CHC, uh, DHMA, D uh, JSPS College, VT Seva, NCH, and many more. As of now, we have over 250 plus recordings on professional webinars related to homeopathy, health-related topics, and many inspirational talks available on our channel, Kavita Kukunur. This webinar is moderated by me, uh, Dr. Shweta Singh, Chief, Ka Chief Administrator. It is being recorded as we speak and we are live on Facebook. We will take uh, questions at the end of the webinar and we will post jot form in Zoom webinar chat at the end of the webinar. Please fill the form to receive your certificate and if you're watching live, uh, email us at carstudygroup at gmail.com. Kindly mute yourself and turn your video off for better connections. And for uh, code of ethics, I would like to invite uh, our car coordinator, Dr. Shrija. Dr. Shrija, are you there? Over to you. I think Dr. Sweta, she's running a little late and she will join soon. Thank you. Okay, sure, ma'am. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Sweta. And she manages our car activities with huge smile. I thank Ka Homeopathy Study Group entire team for their continuous support. Selfless support with which we are able to make our pro bono activities and webinars so beautiful. These webinars are for educational purposes only and should not misuse any of the course content without speaker's permission. Always seek an expert homeopath for treatment. Being an outreach coordinator of CHC PR committee, HNS CPD provider encourages homeopaths to become CHC certified and to participate in HNA accredited CU webinars. Today, February 27th, we have two honorable speakers from our Ka Homeopathy study group, Dr. Pawan Parikh, who speaks about homeopathy in emergency and Dr. Yashika Arora, she shares her knowledge on homeopathy and tonsillitis. Dr. Pawan Parikh, MD in homeopathy, is an experienced homeopath 
with over 27 years of clinical experience. He is a visiting professor to many homeopathic colleges and gives seminars worldwide to name few Hungary, Malaysia, Singapore, Germany, Australia, UK, USA, etc. He has extensively treated cancer, brain tumor, cerebrovascular accident, to name few, hydrocephalus, epilepsy, cirrhosis of liver, chronic renal failure, uterine stone, mammary and uterine tumor, benign prostate, uh, and many skin conditions that are declared as difficult and incurable diseases. He gave lectures on homeopathy, role of homeopathy in surgical cases, homeopathy in severe female diseases, beating cancer with homeopathy. His research work includes challenging difficult and incurable cases like AIDS, cancer, thalassemia, surgical cases with enthusiastic results, teaching and training med medical and non-medical doctors from all over the world at his center. We welcome Dr. Pawan to our webinar. And we also have our second speaker, young dynamic homeopath, Dr. Yashika Arora. She is an alumni of NHMC, Delhi. She is currently pursuing MD in homeopathy from DKM MHMC Aurangabad, achiever of STSH 2015 scholarship program organized by CCRH Delhi. Title, Efficacy of Homeopathic Medicines in the Treatment of Alopecia Areta for a period of six months under CCRH. A speaker at various platforms and took various webinars recently with Aurangabad and Latur Group, Homeopathic Medical Association, AAHSA, YA, AHMA, and our Kavita Holistic Approach, Bhargava Phytolab, Homeopathy 360, Homeopathy Junction, ASH Homeopathic Academy. She has organized several webinars, regular CMEs, and seminars in Delhi and all over India with various homeopathic associations. She is a volunteer at Perfect Health Mela for two years. She is very kind and our dedicated car volunteer and creates beautiful flyers and website updates. Let us welcome both our speakers to our webinar. Dr. Pawan, would you like to start please? Right. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 We can hear you, Dr. Pama. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you very much and a warm welcome to all of you. I would like to thank Dr. Kavita Koknur and the entire team of KHA who is doing a very good work in increasing the essence of homeopathy globally. Today, as I am talking on the topic homeopathy and emergency. Dr. Pawan, would you like to turn on your video, please? Okay. Yes. Is it open now? Yes. Yes, we can. As I am talking on the topic homeopathy and emergency, but before talking on this subject, I would like to say that there is a general perception in the public is that homeopathy is for simple diseases like cold, cough, and fever. But I think that if we treat difficult diseases, if we treat incurable diseases, so-called incurable diseases, if we treat emergency cases, I think that we can spread a much better image about homeopathy in the society. So before talking on this subject or before starting this topic, we must know what emergency condition is. New, next, how will it go? 
Dr. Pawan, would you like to do enter or down arrow? Please. Yeah, down arrow it is not working. Down arrow it is not oh, working. Nay. Yes, yes. A medical emergency. Now it's okay. As I as I was telling that what emergency is, what medical emergency is. A medical emergency is an injury or illness that poses an immediate threat to a person's health or life which requires urgent intervention to prevent a worsening of the situation. Now the question arises, what emergency conditions are? Injury and illness. We have very good medicine in form of Rustox, Anika Montana, Ruta, Calendula officinalis, Hypericum, Lidum Pa. As far as meningitis is concerned, we have very good medicine in form of Belladonna, Cuprum Metallicum, Stramonium, Haloborus, Zincum Metallicum, and of course, Tuberculinum and Bacillinum. As far as cardiac attack or the heart attack is concerned, once again, in emergency, we have very good medicine in form of Aconite Nap, Cactus Grandiliflorus, Spigelia, Creticus oxycantha, nausea, lachesis, metabolic, the dehydration. People usually remember China official is, is there in everybody's mind, in everybody, in each and every homeopath. But remember, ORS has its own importance. As far as neurological status epilepticus is concerned, my personal experience is that many times the neurophysician even get nervous in cases of status epilepticus. But as far as homeopathy is concerned, once again, we have very good medicine in form of aconite nap, belladonna, cuprum metallicum, plumbum metallicum, zincum metallicum, oinanthi crocata, and of course, we must not forget artemisia vulgaris. As far as suicidal thoughts, or suicidal impulse is concerned. Aurum metallicum is known to everybody, but we must not forget Ignatia, Natrum Iriaticum, Arsenic Album, and Acid Phosphorica. And at last, the urological, the acute renal failure, Aconite, NAP, once again comes on the front foot, then Apis Mellifica is there, Arsenicum Album is there, Causticum is there, and many more medicines. Now, as I have told in the very beginning that there is a general perception in the public that homeopathy is for simple diseases like cold, cough, and fever. And this perception was there in the Hanuman's time also. You see what the disciples of Dr. Boningerson requested him. Dr. Boningerson, who was close to Hanuman, was approached by some of his colleagues to request Hanuman to allow them allopathic drugs during emergency and homeopathic drugs later. And homeopathic drugs later, when it was conveyed to Hanuman, he called them mongrel sex, that is crossbreed. You know, what was the Hanuman's reply? It is a widely held belief that emergency cases require allopathic treatment. It shows our ignorance, inefficiency, and inadequate knowledge in the field of homeopathic system of medicine. A well-chosen remedy will bring instantaneous relief. Hanuman said this while revising the fourth edition of Organon of Medicine. Now, I personally feel that I am working for the last 30 years and my personal experience is that I treat emergency cases, I enjoy treating emergency cases, difficult cases more easily as compared to the chronic cases. Why? The aphorism 82 says, in acute diseases, the chief symptoms strike us and become evident to the senses more quickly 
and hence much less time is required for tracing the picture of the disease and much fewer questions are required to be asked in emergency cases. Now, the question is, what is the perception in emergency? Physician with power of perception can pick out a few troublesome symptoms and choose the remedy, which when administered in a suitable potency will bring instant relief. This question is often asked to me in the seminar, in the conferences, or in the daily conversation that what is the homeopathic approach in emergency cases? The homeopathic approach remains the same. Law of similar is the fundamental law of homeopathy. This is the solid rock on which the homeopathy stands. And this law applies in emergency with a difference that the decisions, that the decisions have to be quick with minute observation is striking at the correct symptom. Now, in the emergency cases also, you should look for the mental symptoms. And this question is also asked to me in various seminars in national, international, that how to get the mental symptom. I will share it in the next slide, but you must attach great importance to the mental while treating emergency. How you will get the mental? I will tell you in the next slide, uncommon and peculiar symptoms denote the individuality of the patient. We must nourish the brain with numerous medicines to meet the emergency. The question is often asked why we should give importance to the mental symptoms. We should give importance to the mental symptoms because the highest cellular activity takes place in the brain and this makes the person in individual and individuality is the keynote symptom of homeopathic system of medicine. Correct decisions and correct interpretations are of paramount importance to us. Remember, if you go through your materia medica, if you go through the repertory, remember unconsciousness and semi-unconsciousness is also an important symptom and you will have to recognize it. Now, homeopathy in the intensive care unit. You see, when I enter, today also I'm going to uh, see the patient uh, in the intensive care unit in a hospital just after this presentation. And my experience is that even a seasoned practitioner, even a neurophysician or a neurosurgeon or a general physician sometimes become nervous when they enter the intensive care unit because when the patient is battling between life and death and when the on one side of the bed the patient's attendant are there on the another side of the bed the team of duty doctors are there the nursing staff is there and ecg machine is beeping pin drop of silence is there now you can imagine the mental state of a homeopath also but you should not get nervous you should see is the patient experiencing a high fever if the fever is there, is it continuous or intermittent? What are the concomitants? Are the eyes half fully closed, pupils dilated or staring? Is the breathing stertorous? Now, in the ICU, now I enjoy going in the intensive care unit, seeing patient, I see is the head hot or the feet cold? Does he want, if the patient is in the semi-conscious state, if he wants to be fed, if he wants to be fed from a shorter distance, then carbo vegetables is the medicine. If he wants to fend from a longer distance, then lachesis is the medicine. Remember, try to observe. You must keep your mind and eyes open. Does the action of the patient call to our mind or remedy? Is the eyes staring, picking of the lips, picking of the bed clothes? And then you must think, what was the condition? How this patient was brought to this inter intensive care unit? What made him brought? What made him brought? Is the patient has been, if the patient is there in the intensive care, care unit, is it by some drugging? Limitations of homeopathy. 
all signs have its own limitation so is the case with homeopathy too if ignorantly if you go beyond limitations serious complications may arise and this may pose a threat to the physician personally as well as to the profession we must see if the patient is severely dehydrated individual ors or saline is required if patient is undernourished nutritious diet is required if ca acute chemical toxicity is there then gastric lavage is required if the patient is in hypoglycemic state then apart from china officially is we must give patient sugar now this is the case emergency case on congestive heart failure a very difficult case and most mem memorable case of my life now the question arises what are the causes behind congestive heart failure the causes are coronary artery disease hypertension abuse of alcohol valvular heart problem idiopathic and drug abuse in this case you will see this case became the case of congestive heart failure due to abuse of drug a girl aged 12 years was suffering from pain lower abdomen right iliac fossa with fever and vomiting senior physician considering it to be a case of appendicitis patient was referred to surgeons where an ultrasound was done with an opinion within the normal limit the first prescription is of a senior physician ultrasound was prescribed and the ultrasound was within the normal limit so the case was referred to a surgeon pain in the right iliac fossa you can see for the last one and a half month history of vomiting tenderness in the right iliac region and the case was suspected of acute appendicitis this is the ultrasound report ultrasound report was within the normal limit since the patient on and off complained of pain in the right iliac region low ranging fever and the patient was put on anti tubercular treatment because the continuous pain was there and low ranging fever was there but in spite of the anti tubercular treatment the patient was not getting relief the patient was not feeling well so the parents took her to a another surgeon and another surgeon examined her and cox abdomen was uh, diagnosed and advised her to continue anti tubercular treatment and he prescribed some medicine another prescription is of the chest specialist the pulmon pulmonologist now if you go through the roberts philosophy it is written over there there are two mission of the physician mission number 1 is to treat the case and mission number 2 is not to spoil the case and i think here in this case they failed in both the mission they couldn't treat the case and they spoiled the case too anti tubercular treatment continued and condition deteriorated after complete one year treatment improvement was negligible but pain abdomen vomiting ascites enlargement of the liver could be seen easily difficulty in breathing started when difficulty in breathing started the parents of the patient took her to a nearby physician their family physician there the x-ray chest was done and in the x-ray chest bilateral pleural effusion was there and the another x-ray chest was done their cardiomegaly with bilateral pleural effusion was there and one more test was there that was echocardiography that is it was lvef was 22% you know what is lvef it is the amount of the blood pumped by the left ventricle and the normal value is 55 to 70% is normal 40 to 55% is below normal less than 40% may confirm diagnosis of the heart failure and less than 35% patient may be at risk of life threatening irregular heartbeat now you can see here it is 22% condition worst condition deteriorated further anti tubercular treatment course completed difficulty in breathing fever now from ascites to anasarca congestive heart failure bilateral pleural effusion and hepatomegaly 
was seen, case was referred to some other physicians too. These are the two physicians and they referred the case to Ames or the Max Hospital. Ames, that is All India Institute of Medical Sciences, the highest authority in our country. Patient was referred to New Delhi and homeopathy accepted the challenge. I would like to say that when the case was referred to me, I accepted the challenge and usually what I do when the, this type of cases comes, I go with the investigations again. That is fresh investigations are done. And this ultrasound was done by me. Hepatomegaly was there. Ascites was there. Bilateral pleural effusion was there. That is congestive heart failure. This is the pathological report. You can see everything was perfect. The TSH was slightly raised 5.17. Normal here was 4.2 and the serum bilirubin was also increased and sodium was perfect, potassium was all right. This is the urinary report, the epithelial cells and the WBC were 0 to 4, but RBC was 10 to 20 hypothetical per field. This is the picture of the patient. This is the picture of the girl. The, she developed an asarca. Time was when she was brought to me, time was short and judgment was difficult and she was battling between life and death. You can see the face expression, the swelling up to the face. This is the symptomatic part, irritable and weeping was there. Sadness could be seen from her face, swelling all over the body, thirst moderate, urine in drops, patient was hot by nature, Epismalifica 200 weekly at bedtime was prescribed. Irritation, weeping, sadness continued. Slight decrease in swelling was there after the administration of Epis Malefica. Moderate thirst continued. Moderate thirst continued. Urination in feeble stream. Epis Malefica 200 repeated weekly. Better. Sadness better. Swelling decreased. Slight thirst slightly improved. Urinary flow is still in feeble stream. Epis Malefica 200 repeated for one month as she used to come from a distant place from my clinic. Now, during the treatment, now you can see some change on the face. Expression of this girl is there. Earlier, the LVEF was 22%. And now the LVF increased up to 26%. Ascites is there. And this is the third echocardiography, LVF from 22 to 26, and now it increased up to 35%. Swelling reduced, thirst improved, urine with feeble flow. This is the ultrasound report, mild hepatomegaly, mild ascites, mild left pleural effusion. Earlier, bilateral pleural effusion was there. Now school is started. Now you can see the ascites is also better, swelling better, but continued. Is still not much thirsty, urine and flow with fever stream. Epis Malefica, 200 repeated for one month. This was the ultrasound. Here, the bilateral pleural effusion or the left pleural effusion go gone. Mild hepatomegaly with prominent inferior vena cava and hepatic vein. Veins with mild ascites was there. Swelling absent, swelling disappeared completely, thirst increased, urinary flow much better, Epis Malefica 200 weekly continued. Now, this is the fourth and the fifth uh, echocardiography is there, LVF 45% and here 54%. The normal condition is 55. And this is the ultrasound report, liver, gallbladder, pancreas, spleen, bilateral kidney and uterus are normal. This is the picture of the girl. You can see how smilingly she is giving pose for the photograph. No ascites, no anasarca. This is the pathological report. But you see earlier the TSS was 5.17, but here it increased to 7.57 and urine 0 to 4 pus cells and RBC 2 to 4. Pathology during treatment. TSH 7.57, it increased apart from the benefit, all the benefits she got. Now you see the pressure on the physician, they started putting pressure on me. 
she started catching cold easily. Afternoon rise in temperature started again. Severe pain in abdomen started again. Nervousness started. Excessive weakness. Patient hot by nature. Now, the patient's attendant started putting pressure on me that, Doctor, what are you doing? The same thing has started again. What has happened with the medical treatment? Afternoon rise in temperature was there, severe pain in abdomen is there, and hopefully the ascites and anasarca will also start again. I told them, you need not worry, you leave it to me. My advice to the young homeopath, my advice to the newly budded homeopath is that you should not get nervous in this crisis. But the question arises, how to overcome this nervousness? This You can overcome this nervousness by confidence. But how to gain confidence? You can gain confidence when you have a very good knowledge of materia medica. When you have a very good knowledge of organ of medicine. And when you have a very good knowledge of the practical application of materia medica and organ, then you can have a very good knowledge and you can overcome this nervousness and you can increase your confidence and you can treat the difficult cases, the surrendered cases, the incurable cases or the emergency cases. It started catching cold easily and here the earth iodatum 200 weekly at bedtime was prescribed. Now, with the change of the dictum says that with the change of symptom, the change of medicine is required. Fever better, Nervousness continued, sneezing and running nose better, low ranking fever better, mild pain in abdomen better, weakness improved, arsenica myodatum 200 weekly at bedtime repeated. Thyroid normal on 30th of September 2011, 5.17 was there. On 24th of November 2011, it increased to 7.57. And on 4th of January, 2013, the value came down to 1.36, no, 1.58. So everything was perfect. And I treated this, I enjoyed treating this case. And still now I am getting lots of patients from this family. In conclusion, I would like to say that law of similar is the fundamental law of homeopathy and this law equally applies in emergency condition. We must thoroughly nourish the brain with numerous medicines to treat various medical emergencies. Physician with power of perception chooses the remedy when administered in suitable potency will bring instant relief. Emergency, trauma, injury, depression, Sometimes the most seasoned practitioner will panic and draw blank during this time. But each emergency, remember, but each emergency is organized by definite sign and symptoms. Suppressed anger, grief, financial loss, etc. causing apoplexy or hypertension, the background of which are emotions, the mind, the mental symptoms, which is the basis of homeopathic prescription. Nourishing the brain with Hanumanian principle and Materia Medica to meet the emergency with a victorious attitude of mind and a desire to win. Results are mostly outstanding. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Pawan, for this wonderful presentation, sharing the difficult cases, showing the efficacy of homeopathy and how it can play a very important role in emergency conditions. And when applied with the homeopathy principle to see the amazing cure and results. 
So, Dr. Swetha will take um, some questions, um, Dr. Pawan. Yes. There is one question from Dr. J.M. How was the EF and how many years the treatment continued? I think it took more than one year. It took more than one year. From Epis Malefica, then we switched over to Arsenicum Iodatum. I think Arsenicum Iodatum took about uh, seven to eight months and before that Epis Malefica was the medicine. Okay, thank you, sir. And do we have any more questions from the viewers? Any questions? Anyone would like to ask? No more questions, uh, ma'am. So over to you. Thank you, Dr. Sweta. So even if if you have any more questions, we will take it at the end of the webinar. And we will have Dr. Yashika now to speak about homeopathy on tonsillitis. Let uh, us welcome Dr. Yashika. Excuse me. Uh, uh, I would like to go to a hospital to uh, see another case. Uh, may I have your permission, please? One second, Dr. Pawan. Dr. Sweta, shall we share the certificate, please? And yes, uh, sure. thank you so much. Really, really appreciate Dr. Pawan. In spite of family emergency, you made it. Thank you so much. And we will bring you back again. And um, we would like My... to take privilege to honor your gracious presence um, with this certificate from our study group team. Please kindly accept. Thank you. Thank you very much. And my best wishes to Dr. Yashika Aroda for her presentation. And thank you very much to Dr. Shweta Singh and Dr. Srija. And, and of course, I cannot forget Dr. Kavita Kuknur. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Pavan. And um, we'll see you back. And uh, thank you so much once again. Bye-bye. Okay. Are you seeing this? Vibu Internet. Ma'am, am I uh, audible? Yes, yes. Welcome to our webinar, Dr. Yashika. Please. Yeah, my Wi Fi connection just changed. Just give me a second. I'll be back. Oh, uh, think. Hello. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yes. Uh, so first of all, I would like to thank uh, and congratulate Dr. Pawan sir. He did a great job, and it was so wonderful listening to him and learning from him. Such a beautiful case. So thank you so much, sir. As well as thank you for your wishes for this webinar. I really need uh, the motivation and always this guidance from great homeopaths to, uh, to continue uh, sharing knowledge about homeopathy. And next, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Kavita Kukunur, ma'am, Dr. Shweta, ma'am, Dr. Regina, Dr. Srija, and everybody in our CAST study group uh, who always motivate me and be uh, my all uh, tantrums, I would say. <laughs> so thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to uh, share my views uh, in this webinar today and welcoming me uh, for this webinar. Thank you so much. Without wasting my time, uh, any more time, I think I should start the presentation. I'll just share my screen. My screen is visible? Yes. Thank you so much. So today's topic for uh, me is homeopathy and tonsillitis. And uh, here I'm going to discuss, uh, uh, firstly, we'll go through the introduction of a uh, little introduction. I know everybody know about tonsillitis and have a great number of knowledge and uh, taken so many cases of tonsillitis. 
as they are most common in our practice. Uh, so, um, but before that, we'll be going to discuss in short about tonsillitis. And then I'm going to discuss a case study of, ton on, of tonsillitis, the follicular tonsillitis uh, case I'll be going to discuss uh, 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 in the, in the uh, upcoming lecture. So before starting the webinar, uh, I would like to thank Ka, uh, Kavita Holistic Approach and Ka Study Group for giving me this opportunity. I am Dr. Yashika Aroda Malotra and I have uh, completed my MD uh, in Homeopathic Materia Medica and I am proud now practicing in Janakpuri, Delhi. I will just share the full screen. Yeah. So what are tonsils? Before beginning any uh, thing about tonsillitis, uh, what are tonsils? Uh, we have uh, two masses of tissue which is present at the back of our throat and they act as our filters or you can say they trap the germs coming from outside uh, that could otherwise enter our airways or the lungs or and cause infection. So these are two masses of the uh, at the back of our throat. Uh, which protects us from uh, protects our uh, airways from entering any of the germs inside. They actually make antibodies inside to fight the infection. Sometimes or some or the other times when there is uh, when there is heavy uh, heavy number of germs or there is something which is which is uh, which they cannot control or which they cannot fight. They may become overwhelmed by some bacteria or viruses and uh, that may result in the swelling or the inflammation or the swollen tonsils we can say and that is what is defined as tonsillitis. So tonsils, when the tonsils in, uh, at the back of our throat get uh, uh, inflamed either in the form of acute or in the form of a chronic way, that is known as tonsillitis. I think everybody uh, must be knowing inflammation, that swelling, redness may be seen, pain may be present. These are few of the symptoms whenever any inflammation in the in any body part occurs. And the commonest cause of uh, this uh, uh, of sore throat in children is found to be tonsillitis. Whenever a child, uh, growing child, comes to you with a sore throat. You should always suspect it. Uh, you should always suspect this as a cause that uh, diagnosis may be tonsillitis as well whenever a child is coming to you because this is very common in childhood and it happens once in a while or then come again. Like it has a tendency to reoccur in a very short period. There are three types of tonsillitis. They can occur in the acute phase like suddenly for three, four days and end in another two weeks, two to four weeks. Or they may be recurrent tonsillitis that they may occur several times in a year or that may go on for long time. That is uh, months go on for the infection, which may be termed as chronic tonsillitis. So there are very various risk factors. You must be knowing that it may be caused by streptococcal infection or staphylococci infection, many adenoviruses, influenza viruses, herpes virus, uh, Epstein-Barr virus. There are many various viruses which may affect the throat and cause tonsillitis. And the kids between five to year, eight years of a five to fifteen years of age group, especially three to five years of age group uh, ch child, whenever he, he starts to go to school or meet people or come across various germs that may get cause tonsillitis because they, uh, tonsils may occur through cold virus or measles or through bacterial causes like staphylococci, streptococcal or pertussis, etc. So a child when he goes to the uh, he goes to the school at three to five years of age, he may meet with this fresh infection. Uh, the causative organism may be maximum of the times it is be it may be beta hemolytic streptococcus, staphylococcus, etc. Another uh, reason, another risk factor, another cause which may be the reason for uh, this uh, in, uh, tonsillitis infection is maybe drinking any infected water. Uh, or drinking uh, the the milk which is not good for health which is uh, which is actually uh, not fresh uh, or it may be infected somewhere or maybe pnd the pnd may be one of the reason that post nasal drip people with allergic rhinitis or sinusitis 
or having complaints of PND may also get uh, infection of tonsils as um, as the reason uh, as one of the risk factors. General ill health. If the person is having low immunity or he's not having like uh, he's he's very prone and sensitive to infections and his general health is weak, then also uh, tonsillitis may be a common infection because uh, being at low immunity, we come across infections each day and that, that may affect our body. Overcrowded places, ill-ventilated rooms, especially in spring and autumn season, tonsillitis is seen more commonly. And uh, as we already discussed, that inflammation, whenever there is an inflammation, the symptoms may be redness, pain, swollen uh, swelling or loss of function these are few uh, these are the five uh, functions that may that these are things which five things which occur in every inflammation in the body so for the first and foremost is again throat pain or tenderness may be seen in the in this area throat area the pain may be there may be pain in the throat region which may radiate even to the ears and whenever you swallow food whenever whenever you having tonsillitis the patient uh, when uh, whenever swallow the food it may become he may become worse on swallowing and sometimes uh, the inflammation may be so strong so uh, so swollen like in follicular tonsillitis that it makes it hard to breathe through the mouth it make it hard to breathe through the mouth uh, so uh, this may be a symptom which may be seen fever obviously fever is one of the uh, common symptom in any inflammation Tonsils may become red. Fossils, these fossils may become red. Our fossils, uh, which we can see at the back of our throat, back of our mouth, and uh, there may be white or yellow coating over the tonsils, which may show inflammation with redness. So painful blisters may also be seen, or ulcers may be seen whenever there is any any extreme case of tonsillitis or recurrent tonsillitis or chronic tonsillitis. Headache may also be one of the reasons. The signs which you usually uh, commonly see in the patients is the, the raised temperature again, that is fever. Pulse may be running fast. Tachycardia is most common in fever cases or inflammation cases. The tongue may be coated because of the swelling. The person is not able to swallow things or eat food properly. Tonsils would be congested. There may be some white or yellowish coating that is incipitated debris over the surface. You may see. You may see the lymph nodes. These lymph glands, cervical lymph glands, may be seen as enlarged, or they may be tender to touch. The patient's voice will be a little thick or hoarse or very muffled when he speaks because he is very. The inflammation has occurred at the throat level. Weakness. Loss of appetite, cough, uh, irritating cough, or um, uh, ear pain, or swollen glands in the neck, bad breath, offensiveness, pyrrhea, stiffness in the neck because of this pain. That may be one of the commonest signs, where these are few of the commonest signs which may be seen in tonsillitis. You term it, you term the tonsillitis as grade zero when the tonsil is not visible. Uh, uh, or, uh, beyond the anterior tonsillar pillar or it is being surgically removed. When it is grade one, uh, when the tonsils occupy 25% of the oropharynx, when they occupy 50%, uh, I, uh, but uh, when they occupy 50%, it is, it is termed as less than 50%, but uh, more than 25%, it is grade two. And when there are grade three, that is more than... Uh, uh, less than 75% and more than 25% of 50% and grade 4 when they are about to reach in the midline. When you see an extreme case of tonsillitis, it will be uh, the tonsils may be, uh, may be seen uh, will, uh, attaching to each other meeting in the midline of the mouth. So that may be uh, the that may be that is termed as grade 4.
so uh, this is very common in seen in children uh, with the this is very commonly seen in children but children may have some other complaints when they are coming to you for tonsillitis like they may also complain of upset stomach constipation or diarrhea some some or the other issue or vomiting they may say a c or pain in the stomach or drooling of saliva uh, from the mouth or not able to eat anything or swallow anything so um, whenever a child is affected with a tonsillitis it, he may show the symptoms of gi tract also uh, because of this tonsillitis and he may have upset stomach regarding the diagnosis we are very clear that the clinical examination is the most common uh, commonly um, uh, commonly used method for diagnosing diagno diagnosis of tonsillitis another uh, like you may see red swollen tonsils or fever or uh, signs of infection swelling etc pain etc otherwise you can go for a throat swab wherein you can uh, test the saliva from the throat or the the cells from the throat can be uh, taken in the swab and uh, cot uh, in the cotton swab and uh, they can be tested for streptococci uh, bacteria or another uh, is blood test wherein you can see uh, for the number of blood cells like wbc is maybe increased or esr uh, may be increased absolute eosinophil count may be seen uh in the cases of tonsillitis or another uh, diagnostic feature is uh, maybe rash which may be linked sometimes it may occur with the alternating with the rash scalatina rash that is usually common in streptococcal throat infection if this tonsillitis we do not manage properly however whatever um, matlab however uh, it is not managed or it being ignored by the patient it may lead to many of the complications like the most common one is quinsy wherein there is collection of pus around the tonsil and it results in the peritonsillar abscess middle ear infection may be uh, seen because the throat ent is always connected so middle ear infection may be seen if it is not managed there may be breathing problems the patient may have tonsillar cellulitis or that may spread to other tissues as well nearby rheumatic fever scarlet fever sinusitis kidney infection may also be seen so how you can manage when you are talking about tonsillitis how you can manage uh, it at home uh, if you if you are if you how you can take precautions i would say you cannot manage it without medicines uh, because uh, it uh, if the infection is uh, much so you need a medication as well but along with medication you need to manage the patient generally as well ask him to uh, take adequate rest drink warm and flu cold fluids uh warm or uh, drink warm or very cold fluids to help with the throat pain whatever is making it relieving eat very smooth foods like ice creams etc uh, not very uh, uh, not uh, very much uh, very much uh, cold or uh, like uh, having a, a proper ice in it but yes uh, chocolate ice creams etc or apple sauce or some flavored things may be eaten that may so uh, soothe the throat and uh, you could, he must be asked with to gargle with warm salt water or you can ask him to gargle with phyto like a q uh, in uh, in water uh, 25 drops of phyto like a uh, mother tincture uh, that helps to relieve uh, a tonsillitis great uh, great at a great uh, at a great level uh, no you can even note down phyto like a mother tincture is very helpful for gargling and he may use uh, sugar lozenges Uh, like uh, we we have uh, we we have uh, uh, mishri etc the uh, we can uh, chew for some time uh, to just to relieve the throat when you come to homeopathy as we are having this discussion we all are connected together through this whole uh, through uh, through homeopathy only so when it comes to homeopathy talking about homeopathy uh, the management can be done by various medicines Uh, like we have uh, merk bin iodatus merk proto iodatus belladonna hepar salve 
मॉक्सॉल फाइटला का बेराइटा का कैलकेरिया का कैलकेरिया आयोड सोराइनम साइलिशिया सल्फर हिपार्सल्फ वेरियस रेमिडीज विच which can be used as per the symptom of the case as per the symptom totality whatever is the totality of the case you can match with the remedies and accordingly uh, the things can be managed today we are going to discuss a case of uh, of tonsillitis which came to me uh, around 6 months back i can say 6 months back a patient came to me she was a 26 year old female and she visited to me for the complaint of unbearable pain in the throat since one and half months uh, and she was having difficulty in swallowing food etc and it was recurring again and again she was under antibiotics and taken all sort of medicines uh, when she came to me actually the the she was not, she was uh, she was not from she was from india but she was uh staying somewhere outside in nigeria the patient is was in nigeria so he she visited to me when she came to india for some marriage uh marriage uh, functions so she came to me and she said that i we we i have tried all doctors there i have uh, tried all medicines there but i am not getting relieved and she came uh, with the complaint of feverish feeling with chilliness also she had so much exertion during the travel time lag and except everything uh, in the marriage uh, marriage function as well so she was very tired body ache was there she also felt a, a sort of breathlessness you can say or shortness of breath because of this pain uh, she was not able to eat and she also said that she has a recurrent tendency of tonsillitis since many years that every 3 4 months she gets affected with the tonsils and uh, this is not relieving since her childhood so i asked her inquired about inquired about more about her that actually how it started uh, since childhood what are you uh, what are you uh, taking or what uh, what precautions do you take so uh, she said uh, that since childhood she had since childhood she had a complaint or uh, she had allergic rhinitis as well so she, she said that she may be allergic to dust she may be allergic to some orange or sour foods or she she is also allergic to pets etc so whenever uh, she come across pets she eat something sour like orange or curd even so all these things uh, aggravated her and she was allergic to things since her childhood and she also had a history of allergic rhinitis and uh, she said that uh, these these things were usually recurred again and again inquiring more about her i asked her about her physical generals she she said that because of this uh, throat issue i am having decreased appetite that is very common in a tonsillitis infection and she had increased thirst because she that was giving her relief so uh, she used to drink lot of water and uh, in the marked feature what i got was aversion to sweets she had aversion to sweets and she was a chilly patient and uh, she is her in fact her sleep was also disturbed because of this pain in throat talking about her mental generals i asked her i asked more about her how was she how was her nature so she said she had a very reserved nature and she never used to talk to anybody in fact she has went she has been to nigeria since past 3 years with her husband after her marriage soon after her marriage she shifted to nigeria with her husband he was some sales executive uh, so she had to shift along with him so there also she doesn't have much friends she only talks with her mother uh, sometimes on call and very less of friends uh, or some colleagues of her husband so she had a very reserved nature plus because of this issue because of uh, because of um, recurrent issues she is facing and also we have a history of many other things in the case which we which i am going to discuss now she used to suffer from anxiety or she is very she a palpitation or she was very over sensitive person easily frustrated with mood swings etc 
so uh, when i uh, inquired more about her she also had some other complaints like i uh, we, we we noted a lot of obesity uh, in her because she said uh, that she was very slim and, and uh, recently after uh, after marriage shortly after marriage she gained a lot of weight centripetal obesity was being seen and she uh, she also got the ultrasound done because she was facing a lot of uh, hirsutism as well as uh, 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 skipped menses cycle was her cycle was very irregular she had a history of amenorrhea since past 3 to years 3 4 years and also she was getting obese with fatty liver Uh, which came, fatty liver was a coincident finding along with pcod in the ultrasound and she also got her regular test done and because of this weight gain somebody advised her to get the thyroid done because she had a history, family history of thyroid so she got the uh, thyroid done so it was also increased the tsh levels were increased so she was having hypothyroidism as well also when i asked her to get the get more of the her investigations done because uh, pcod was also uh, detected so i got her hormones hormone levels as well uh, so the prolactin was increased and uh, her testosterone levels were also increased so all together uh, she was be, she was being diagnosed with mainly um, the the chief complaint for which she came to me was tonsillitis but along with that she was also facing the issue of pcod and hypothyroidism because of which she had lot of obesity and amenorrhea or you can say irregular menses at every other month so all together this case was taken and um, the uh, the symptoms were noted uh but uh, one thing i also missed uh, in the thing is in the case was her right pain the throat pain was if, um, the throat pain was occurring more on the right side uh because of which she was having yellowish thick expectoration which was increased in the morning especially and she used to sleep with open mouth she had uh, she had profuse salivation sometimes as well so uh, uh, after uh, after uh, coming out to the case she was she was diagnosed with uh, she was being diagnosed with follicular tonsillitis also which was recurrent pcod hyperthyroidism also she had a history of breast abscess so all together it was a very psychotic uh, case i can say the, the psychotic miasm was much noted in the case increased prolactin levels fatty liver obesity all together the psychosis miasm was being noted but then uh, after repertorization few of her symptoms were uh, marked as per the acute phase i gave her the remedy she still my patient continuing the medicines and pa since past 6 months she is not uh, she is not having the the ha she has uh, she didn't complain of tonsillitis again but she is my patient for pcod and obesity thyroid etc we are managing uh, at that point the acute remedy which was uh, which was uh, repertorized and accordingly uh, the case was taken so first rubric which was taken was enlargement of tonsils uh, the the case repertory repertorization was done from kens repertory this is done through the uh, through the app uh, home homepath firefly app mobile app because i was at clinic so i had to uh, repertorize uh, a sap so um, the second uh, rubric was taken as pain throat pain on swallowing mind anxiety mind reserved changeable mood fever with chilliness and then uh, weeping tearful mood also she she had palpitation palpitation during the uh, she said that whenever she had a bad mood or anxiety she used to have palpitation and was she was very worried about her disease again and again all together uh, after marriage because before marriage she was a perfect girl with no much complaints tonsillitis used to occur once in a year or sometimes so she had so everything aggravated after her marriage she had thirst increased thirst and aversion to sweets she was very sensitive person easily affected to dust 
sour things etc she also had abscess in her breast obesity was taken uh, considered as a symptom and cyst in the uh, cyst in the ovaries liver enlargement follicular inflammation i'll just show you the picture of that tonsils which uh, which uh, which were there on in her throat so it was so much uh, inflamed that uh, she had to uh, she had to uh, uh, it was defined it was diagnosed as follicular tonsillitis the prescription after uh, after the after the repertorization the prescription as you can see easily in the repertorization the uh, the remedies which came up uh, in the repertorization was moxol sulfur phosphorus lachesis belladonna lycopodium so if you differentiate between all these remedies so it is very clear that uh, lachesis uh, lachesis and belladonna and phosphorus mock all are very uh, good remedies for uh, managing folliculite uh, uh, tonsillitis but when it comes to follicular tonsillitis so lachesis phosphorus uh, mercury moxol belladonna are great remedies taking the symptomology taking the symptomology belladonna is an uh, acute remedy for tonsillitis and the symptoms she was showing increased thirst loss of appetite and so much irritability um she 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 was showing and uh, she was very uh, like she was she had a reserved nature so uh, the, the, that that at that time it was very difficult to rule out berita carb is also a great remedy for uh, which was coming to my mind while seeing the case because i have got good results with berita carb in uh, berita carb six potency especially in cases of tonsillitis so uh, lachesis was being ruled out as the, the as her right side was more affected so lachesis was totally ruled out sulfur being uh, maybe was ruled out because there was not much burning seen and the case was more towards the psychosis miasm or the you can say psychotic syphilitic it was going on because the growth were seen abscess were seen so sulfur was being ruled out uh, and belladonna and mercury was both calcarea was to be taken into consideration but in the chronic phase of the case but presently i had to manage her tonsillitis uh, so i uh, i just Uh, focused on these two remedies mercurius moxol and belladonna to rule out both the remedies uh, i uh, i just uh, confirmed with all the rubrics because of salivation profuse salivation sometimes and uh, if you can see the symptoms we discussed pcod seen fatty liver seen pain difficulty during swallowing feverish feeling profuse salivation and uh, tonsils right tonsils more affected so moxol is a great remedy for right tonsils she used to sleep with open mouth so after ruling out uh, the repertorization and uh, relating it with the materia medica she was prescribed moxol moxol 30 if you read it uh, through the materia medica uh you 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 may see that all the mock group remedies they are very good remedy they are very good for um, tonsillitis ca cases of tonsillitis like you can uh, say about mock sol you can say about mock mock iod rubber mock iod flavors or mock sal they all are very good remedies for throat mock dalkas for ears so mock group is a great uh, group for um, ent problems so i uh, related it with moxol and after uh, uh, after reading it from the uh, materia medica materia medica clearly says that uh, there is putrid sore throat which is worse on right side you may see inflammation uh, on the over the tonsils there may be uh, ear pain on swallowing there may be pain and uh, the difficult swallowing is there sore sore raw raw sensation smarting pain complete loss of voice she was also having very hoarse voice when i when i was talking to her thirst was increased 
so all these uh, symptoms uh, related to mercsol and she was prescribed mercsol 30 Uh, as it was the acute phase, so she was given Mercsol thirty repeatedly for five days, and um, in uh, in, uh, in in three days only she reverted that she is feeling much better. So uh, for another one day only she was being um, continued Mercsol, so uh, so as not to suppress more the more symptoms as she was feeling still better. So uh, in acute phase we need to repeat the remedy as per the master's guidelines. so she was being prescribed um uh, mercsol for 4 days and then she complained of complete relief in the tonsils after that she was managed for uh, for other problems you can just see the pictures of, of her i'll show you in this screen i'll show you in the uh, image form how she had the first visit of the patient when she came to me see her uh, her whole throat was being red totally red and she was having so much pain after the second visit uh, that is on the third day i will show you the third day the third day the patient came with a little improvement and her uh, her uh, uh, tonsils were better but the right side was still having much pain and redness was present the third visit when she came to me after 5 days you can see her throat you can see her throat is totally fine the red side was much much better with the medicine so uh, this remedy uh, in this acute phase was totally relieved the patient so immediately and and accordingly uh, after that uh, when she was relieved she was continued the medicines for pcod she is still now continuing the medicines in nigeria she takes the medicine uh, as per the prescription um, uh, still we are uh, we are in touch and since then past 6 months 7 months she is not complained of tonsillitis which used to occur every other month to her matlab like in every 15 20 days she had so much tendency of tonsillitis so till uh, since 6 six, uh, six months it is being relieved and we are working on thyroid obesity and pcod right now so take away i would just say that you can um, you one must uh, one must along with the this management uh, medicinal management you must tell the patient to uh, take precautions always which are being very common right now also because of this covid pandemic that she or he should wash their hands often they should maintain hygiene adequate rest and should not share food drink or utensils with anybody and also if a person is having a tendency to tonsillitis he or she must stay away from people who are having some sore throat or tonsillitis so thank you so much uh, everyone for bearing me for so long and listening to me for so long i would like to thank avista holistic approach dr kavita ma'am dr shweta ma'am dr rajna dr shrija dr shravali dr shweta everybody uh, who has been uh, a great contributor always dr pooja i think she is having um, she is uh, she is uh, uh, she is very special today because it's uh, because it's her birthday uh, so uh, so i think everybody i would like to thank for giving me this opportunity to participate in this webinar uh, for you any queries you can uh, contact me at the given details thank you so much over to you shweta ma'am thank you dr yashika uh, any questions from the viewers
We have one question, Dr. Yashika. Uh, what about belladonna in tonsillitis? Yeah, thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, yeah, belladonna is a great remedy in tonsillitis. Um, it is it is one of the bestest remedy, I would say, which is very commonly used by doctors for tonsillitis. Acute phase of tonsillitis and being an acute remedy. If you see the symptoms, uh, there is redness, again, inflammation, which uh, which is given, uh, which is being mentioned in our Materia Medica books only. If the person is asking me about uh, this case <laughs> in Peladona, so uh, I already discussed about the symptoms that she was uh, she had uh, shown that it was right side which was more affected and salivation, sleep prop, sleep issues. Um, so that that that, uh, that is common, like that is common in Merxol. Uh, we talk about belladonna. So there is a glazed appearance and dryness is also very much present in the tonsillitis of belladonna. The patient, uh, again, it is also a right-sided one, but the tonsils feel very constricted and uh, they are more worse with the liquids while swallowing liquids. While in this case, the, the, worse, the patient was worse while swallowing foods, etc. Not much liquids. And sensation of lump is there. Uh, there, there may be some, there, there may be uh, mucous membrane may also get affected in belladonna. So yes, the belladonna is another great remedy, which is very commonly used in tonsillitis. One more question is there uh, from Dr. Muhammad Muzamil. Uh, any specific miasmatic prescription for recurrence of uh, tonsils, tonsillitis? Uh, recurrence of tonsillitis uh, when you uh, say this this um, this goes on as like medorinum is very good remedy which is can be used as a intercurrent remedy as well as a, a, a prescription when you talk about miasmatic point of view so it is another great remedy uh, which which may which I have felt that if you give a dose of uh, Medorinum to the patient, uh, it, it usually prevents uh, the recurrence as well as if you are not getting result with the similimum medicine, give a dose of Medo, uh, 200 or 1M. A single dose would enhance the case so much that the similimum remedy uh, give great results after that. Okay, one more question is there from uh, Dr. Abhishek Gautam. Uh, can uh, any mother tincture or biochemic medicine for, uh, yeah, mother tincture I already discuss, discussed in the uh, already discussed in the case uh, while while the presentation I told Phytolaca decandra mother <laughs> tincture is a great tincture which can be used even for the uh, even as a medicine uh, in the form of as in the in the form of a medicine or it can be used for gargling. It is great um, which which can give good results in cases of tonsillitis. And if you talk about other, if the symptoms like cough, etc. persist, hydrastis again, if the patient is having cough with some expectoration and uh, the effect is there, uh, like the tonsils are enlarged much, hydrastis, mother tincture is also very good. Phytolaca and hydrastis is good. And when you talk about biochemic medicine, uh, I have not much used uh, biochemic medicines for tonsillitis. But yes, when you talk about calcarea floor, and um, uh, you can say Kali Sulf is uh, can uh, proves to be good in cases of tonsillitis and biochemics. Vaithya is we have we are getting uh, some comments like Vaithya is also good remedy for gurgling etc. Vaithya mother tincture, yeah. Yes, uh, Doctor Shala Sultana, she is asking, is there any specific medicine for tonsillitis with pus? Yeah, so we already discussed the remedy of this case was also Merxol. So Merxol is a great remedy for tonsillitis with pus. Merck, bin iodatus, these, the, the, the other forms of Merck, the other medicines which belong to Merck group, Merck iod ruber, Merck iod flavors. They are, they are very good remedies for pus. Hippar self is a wonderful remedy for pus, uh, pustular tonsillitis, which is with the tonsillitis with pus. So if our self is again good, you can use that as well. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Mark, uh, Mark Bain iod for left-sided uh, tonsillitis and Mark Proto iod for right-sided tonsillitis. Yeah, right. right. 
And there's one more question. If sore throat present with pus and irritating cough, what will be the remedy? Kali, Kali group. You, need, you can go for Kali group. Kali Mure, Kali Self. As per the case, whatever you are getting, PND, Kali Carb uh, is a great remedy for PND, uh, wherein sore throat and irritating cough may be relieved. And Kali Self is again very good. Natrum Self. Or as per the case, you can go for. Specifically, you cannot go for a medicine, um, a, single, a single line symptom. If you go for a medicine, then like, there are chances that you may get a failure. So you should uh, make the totality and accordingly manage the case with various remedies. But yes, uh, Kali group is great remedy when you talk about PND with sore throat. And if the patient is having difficulty in even opening the mouth and unable to take neither solid nor liquid. Beraita so cup. Beraita carb is again a great remedy uh, when you talk about uh, swallowing difficulty or no nothing is getting relieved. Uh, if, if a person is getting failure in any medicine, in cases of tonsillitis, ki wo, the case is not getting cured. I have tried Beraita carb, especially in six potency. It gives wonderful results. Low potency, Beraita carb acts so great. This is all about the questions, Dr. Yashika, and a very nice description of tonsillitis uh, with nice case presentation and management. Thank you. Over to you, Dr. Kavita. I hope I could come to everybody's expectations and I could give something good to the uh, audience, whoever joined us today. Yes, yes, you are wonderful. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, Dr. Yashika, for the wonderful presentation and sharing more insights on the tonsillitis, its complications and treating with homeopathy, especially with your successful cases and wide variety of homeopathic uh, remedies. One of the case where um, uh, a child like four years with huge tonsillitis and painless, but uh, as you said, Beretta cup, it, re it made a amazing results. Beretta cup, try 30, but not six, but uh, Six, it's a good to know that potency is helping. Thank you so much. And um, we would like to take privilege to honor your gracious presence and for your precious time today with our CAS study group certificate from our team. Please accept. Thank you so much, Dr. Yashika. Thank you, ma'am. I think uh, Dr. Sweta, Dr. Shrija is here, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm here. Dr. Shrija, would you like to uh, read the Code of Ethics? Sure, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you to the speakers. It was a wonderful webinar. Uh, today, I'm reading the Code of Ethics. <clears throat> and uh, these are the Code of Ethics of our CAR study group. To be a CAR speaker needs at least one to two months active volunteering. Only CAR speaker teams are promoted in newsletters and webinars. CAR provides volunteering for 2 to 12 months, respects and inspires volunteers to grow. Active volunteers will be promoted through our website, social media and added to WhatsApp group. Articles of volunteers will be posted on CAR website and newsletter and will be sent for publication at other journals too. Volunteers and speakers are eligible for prestigious CAR annual awards. Volunteers are eligible for CAR inspirational talks, Volunteers are eligible for case discussion. CA promotes homeopathic organizations as well as their mega events. CA promotes great work of speakers through their book reviews. Honorable guests may propose their future courses or events after the webinar. CA maintains a healthy and happy environment, so keeps only like-minded folks. Thank you. 
so much, Dr. Srija. She's our enthusiastic and dedicated volunteer. Thank you so much, ma'am. And let us announce the upcoming events. In March, we have with Dr. Rajan Shankaran on Raga therapy and homeopathy. And also we have another great speaker, Dr. Gaurang on homeopathic strategies on long COVID and post COVID. And we have many more renowned homeopaths lined up for the car webinars. Today, we have with us our car volunteers, Dr. Rajneesh Kumar Sharma, Dr. Mamata, Dr. Mohammad Musamil, Dr. Padmavati, Dr. Nupursha, Dr. Lakshayata, Dr. Hira, and many more car volunteers watching on Facebook <coughs> Live and here on Zoom. I thank Ka Homeopathy Study Group and their team for their continuous selfless support in our making this car activities and beautiful webinars successful. And always thank all the participants for their undivided attention and inspiring us. Dr. Sweta, do you have anything more, please? Yes, ma'am. Uh, as I talk about our ebook, uh, Our Dose of Spirituality uh, with Kavita, here is a glimpse of the book. Today, we see a successful lady proudly standing in front of us who is bringing a light of education, empowerment to all of us. And that is none other than Dr. Kavita. After the huge positive response for her previous book, Beyond the Limits, A Challenge to Prove Oneself, which was published on June 16, 2011, she had launched yet another ebook, A Dose of Spirituality with Kavita. And it was my privilege to design this one and compile all the inspirational messages. The preface has a beautiful story, the struggles of Dr. Kavita, how she took all her life challenges on head and prevailed in the end. The spiritual angle came right in and she came over with more strength and positivity that you will find in this book. I feel honored to share with, all, with you all the glimpse of this book where Dr. Kavita has shared the lessons she has learned in form of inspirational messages from her family, friends, and car study group volunteers. This book comprises of blessings from Sri Sri Chena Jaya Swami and the priest Sri Atmananda Swami. Introduction was given by Dr. Vatsala Sparling with the good wishes from her husband, Mr. Vinod Kukunu, and her children, Sai and Kavan. Kukunu. She shared the drive in her mind and the quote she follows is, life is a challenge, face it. Beautifully mentioned the key 49 inspirational messages that enriched her life. You must read them out without any break as they are going to empower your soul. This book is embedded with beautiful messages and life secrets of some of the greatest personalities like Dr. Jawahar Shah, Dr. K. Ganpati, Dr. Ajit Kulkarni, Professor Srinivasulu Guduku, Dr. Hira Agarwal, Dr. Rajneesh Kumar Sharma, Dr. Deepak Sharma. Her family members also showered a lot of blessings for Dr. Kavita in the form of their inspirational messages. This book has 20 inspirational messages from Ka Homeopathy Study Group. Dr. Kavita Agaru, వాళ్ళు ఆ డ్రెస్లు మీకు పంపించారు అదే విధంగా ఈ రోజు భోజన దాతగా ఉన్నారు ముందుగా కవిత గారికి హృదయపూర్వక ధన్యవాదాలు తెలియజేస్తున్నా అదే విధంగా కవిత కుకునూరు గారు ఏ దోస్ ఆఫ్ స్పిరిచువల్లీ విత్ కవిత అనే ఒక పుస్తకాన్ని వారు రాసి ప్రచురించి నా సందర్భంగా ఆ ఒక శుభ సందర్భంగా మీకు అందరికీ కూడా కొత్త బాటలు అందించి మీకు భోజనం అందించి ఈ యొక్క సెలబ్రేషన్ వాళ్ళు మీ మధ్యలో జరుపుకుంటున్నారు ఈ యొక్క కవిత మేడం గారు ఇప్పుడే కాదు ఇంతకుముందు కూడా కొన్ని ఏళ్ళ నుంచి ఫయాజ్ వారి యొక్క మిత్ర బృందంతో ఎన్నో సేవా కార్యక్రమాలు అమ్మ పరివార ఆశ్రమం పిల్లల కోసం వృద్ధుల కోసం వాళ్ళు ప్రతి ఒక్క అకేషన్ను బట్టి వాళ్ళు చేస్తూ ఉన్నారు ఈ యొక్క సందర్భంగా వారి యొక్క బృందానికి ఫయాజ్ బృందానికి కవిత మేడం వారి యొక్క బృందానికి అందరికి కూడా 
हृदयपूर्वक धन्यवाद अदे विधा कविता कविता कुकनूर गार अदे विधा डाक्टर श्वेता गार डाक्टर श्री श्रीज गार इत मे सेवा कार्यक्रम चुनाव वारी हृदयपूर्वक धन्यवाद वार वो रास पुस्तक एंत गोप चार अभी उपयोगपड़ी वार इंका मत पे प्रतिष्ठल So this book has twenty inspirational. So this book has twenty inspirational messages from Ka Homeopathy Study Group. Ten words of wisdom by some of the legends of homeopathy. Eleven inspirational message from Dr. Kavita's friend, and a small photo gallery. It's an interesting and simple book which can create some more powerful and positive thoughts in your life. and make you believe in your infinite uh, potential with dr kavita's life experiences and inspirational messages today we completed the first successful month of her book and as we announced the proceedings of the book have been donated to various charitables and homeopathic organizations to name few we donated to kevin Fran friendly foundation to feed poor children uh, to delhi homeopathic medical association VT Saver Reforestation Project in Costa Rica, GSPS College, CSC, NCH, and many more. Apart from Dr. Kavita, her family, friends, uh, we have over twenty-five car volunteers who donated to name few: Dr. Shrija, Dr. Deepa, Dr. Poonam Chablani, Dr. Yashika, Dr. Nupusha, Dr. Pawan Pare. Dr. Rajneesh Kumar Sharma, Dr. Hira, Dr. Deepak Sharma. Since uh, there is huge list. Uh, we might miss some names and but we thanks every uh, thank everyone for their donation for the good cause thank you so much over to you ma'am thank you so much dr swetha singh and she has beautifully compiled this book and i thank everyone ka homeopathy study group team and dr watsala dr swetha verma and dr nupur shah who helped for this book and we have made a book, uh, nice video at the book launch so please watch in detail and thank you all so much for your support your donation and uh, making this a way for the good cause supporting the charities and the homeopathic organizations and uh, dr swetha are we good or anything um, shall we wrap dr yashika do you have anything more with your permission we will wrap no no ma'am nothing uh, as as swetha ma'am says i enjoyed the session a lot i hope people enjoyed it <laughs> everyone enjoyed <laughs> so thank you dr yashika for uh, being there uh, and uh, to the viewers thanks now we are thankful to the viewers for joining us and to access the recording of the webinar subscribe our youtube channel uh, with the name kavita kukunur if you have any query you may reach us at kastudygroup@gmail.com uh, for future updates regarding our webinars follow our uh, social media channels with the name ka study group at facebook linkedin twitter and instagram and fill the jot form to receive your certificate you will get uh, you will receive your certificate within one week and stay connected thank you so much shall i wrap ma'am yes thank you so much dr swetha dr yashika dr shrija and everyone all the ka study group volunteers and participants thank you all see you all next week on march 6th Thank you. Goodbye to all.